One project that I wanted to do for a while now is to make my own 3D printed pipette. Now in the lab, there are really two kind of pipettes that you'll use. There's the micro pipette, which is kind of for volumes from one microliter to one mil about, and they come in slightly different ranges. So you typically have actually three of these. One goes from one to 10 microliters. The second is from 10 to 100 microliters like this one. And then the third one would be 100 to 1000 microliters. And the other type of pipette that you have is the serological pipette. Most of the time in the lab, these are actually electronic, but I have a mechanical one here. Uh, and this basically is for volumes around two mils up to 25 mils typically. So sort of in between when you would use beakers and volumetric flasks, things like that, and slightly larger than micro pipettes. So I decided to actually go ahead and try to replicate the serological pipette since it's working with larger volumes. The sort of accuracy that you need in the parts is quite a bit less. You can kind of get away with a bit worse tolerances, things like that, I think, and you won't notice it as much. Whereas the micro pipette, if you really want to get accurate volumes of one microliter, that starts to get a little trickier. So I went ahead and decided to reproduce this mechanism, basically. All right, so to take it apart, I basically start here to get this pin out. Like so once the pin is out, this wheel will come right off. It's actually two pieces. So that makes it even easier to recreate with a 3D print, actually. And you can pull out this which is the syringe, basically like you would see in any syringe, but this one has gears on it so you can control it more precisely. And next, we'll want to get this out. So there are two pins kind of holding it in, and you have to pop it out of one side, and then it should just come right out like that. And that's the trigger mechanism which basically will release the vacuum so that once you've sucked up your liquid through the serological pipette, you can release it instantly instead of having to redistribute with the wheel. So from there, you can just unscrew this. And that comes out of there. So it's just to hold in this piece which is kind of rubbery to get a good seal on the serological pipette itself. I'll just show you what that would look like. So this is a serological pipette. This is the end. It basically would fit onto this. And that allows you to measure liquids. This one happens to be five mil. So from there, I decided to go ahead and try to recreate the pieces, and this is the final result. So there are some similarities and quite a few significant differences between this design and the actual commercial product that I showed you. So starting off, we'll basically disassemble this one just like I did with the last one, and I'll show you all the different pieces and how they work. So again, you can take out this pin. And this operates the exact same way. Holds in this wheel which is printed in two pieces, just like I showed with the previous version. Then you're able to pull out the plunger, and this is where it starts to get a little bit different. So I wanted to try to 3D print as much as possible with this. So this is actually a TPU 3D printed part. It doesn't quite hold the vacuum like I want, so I'll be working on improving this in future designs. It almost works, but it's not quite there. 
and needs some special tweaks to basically get it to have the flexibility that you need anyway. So I want to try some different different tests on that. And here is where it starts to become a little different. I used the pin design again in this piece instead of the built-in pins. And I thought that was a little easier actually to disassemble this. And then with this piece, I have a TPU part here as well, which doesn't quite work as a flexible material. It's almost there again. But the idea is that it also works as this vacuum stopper. So I need to figure out how to improve that as well. And then the main difference in design here is that I actually use TPU as a spring. So instead of using a metal spring, this is a 3D printed spring, basically. And that actually almost does work. I actually do kind of like this design. From there, you also have the screw on nozzle. And inside is another TPU part. So this is also meant to be flexible filament. It's kind of semi-flexible, I would say. It's 98A hardness. And it is able to actually grip the serological pipette, but it's a little bit tougher than I think is ideal. But this piece also does seem to work a bit better than the smaller pieces. I guess it being printed larger, it gets a little more flexibility than sort of this piece right here or this one right here. And that's it. That's my 3D printed serological pipette. Hopefully with future versions I'll get it working and actually able to hold the vacuum that it creates. At the moment it can draw up the liquid but it just doesn't hold the vacuum properly. And that's it.